Greetings, I'm Dr. Ketsia Alert Sadler, founder of College Cafe, and your moderator for the College Planning with NAAHP webinar series. The National Alliance for the Advancement of Haitian Professionals and College Cafe welcome you to 2024. Hope it has been a great start for you, and we're looking forward to being part of your college planning search and everything that goes along with it. So today you'll have the opportunity to view some of the webinars from 2023's series. If you weren't able to join us or if you joined and had to leave the broadcast earlier, here's your chance to watch them again. We had some amazing topics. We first talked about the college visit with Ms. Vanessa Deverix from Montclair State University, and we had Dr. Gaetan Jamari from Rowan University. And then we talked about running to pay for college. Looking at all you athletes in the track and field uh, realm. And so we had Coach John uh, Prescott, Coach Cherie Ware Powell, who's an award winning coach at Felician University, and also Miss Michelle Neal. Then we moved on to a topic that's really interesting for parents the actual parent involvement in the college application process and parents have to understand. We had two moms who went through the process with their children. The first mom is Philippa Sutherland and our other parent is Miss Shanta Campbell and their children are doing well at Drew University and Hampton University. And finally, we ended this year with looking at careers in music, music in the key of life. And our guests at, on that episode were Ms. Jasmine Young from the Howard University, Dr. Gary Hollander, band director from D Dwight Morrow High School in Englewood, New Jersey. And we had Armand David Sadler, hip hop reporter for Vibe Magazine. So if you missed any of these episodes, we hope you will join us. Grab your popcorn, your favorite drink, and get ready to learn some things in order to fulfill your dreams of whatever your career choice will be. We look forward to working with you in 2024. Take care. Bye-bye. Greetings and welcome to College Planning with the National Alliance for the Advancement of Haitian Professionals. I'm Dr. Ketsia Alert Sadler, founder of College Cafe, and I'm so delighted to have this episode of this webinar series for you. I'm so excited because I have three amazing guests on with us tonight. But before we get started, let's thank our partners in this college planning series. First, we want to thank the National Alliance for the Advancement of Haitian Professionals, of course, for providing us this opportunity to share information with you, our students, families, and whoever is listening to us in the World Wide Web. Next, we have Parent Matters and Golden V, and finally, College Cafe. So thank you everyone for joining us and tuning into today's episode, which is planning for that key of life. So let me start by first introducing our guests. They all share their bios with us, but I kind of like for them to talk about themselves. I'm just gonna give you a snippet of their, um, of their history, for lack of a better word. So we wanna start first with Professor Jasmine Young, MBA. She is currently the director of the Warner Music Blavatnik Center for Music Business at Howard University. She was appointed in the spring of 2023. She was award, awarded a master's degree in business administration, innovation and entrepreneurship from Felician University and a bachelor of arts in communication from Howard University. So I know she's very excited to be back at her alma mater working and teaching. Our next guest is Dr. Gary Hollander, who is currently teaching music at the in the Englewood Public School District. He's been there since 2005. He's the adjunct band director at Monroe College since 2017. Uh, Dr. Hollander received a BM in trombone, Bachelor of Music, I'm guessing, Dr. Hollander, in trombone performance from the Peabody Conservatory of the Johns Hopkins University, a MM, uh, Master of Music, from Illinois State University, and his Doctor of Musical Arts from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. 
He also teaches at um, Monroe, you know, Monroe College as well, um, which I just said. So our third and final guest is Armand Sadler, who got his Bachelor of Science in Communications from Cornell University. While he's um, the youngest of our guests this evening, but he's done a whole lot in his few years of being out um, from college. So Armand, kudos to you for everything you've been doing. He is currently a multimedia journalist from Englewood, New Jersey, and he, he is a multimedia journalist from Anglo New, New Jersey, and currently he's the hip hop reporter at Vibe Magazine, where he writes daily news articles, covers new music releases, interviews artists, celebrities, producers, athletes, etc., covers festivals and shows, and operates as one of the faces of the prestigious magazine. Thank you so much for joining me and sharing your experiences with our audience. I think this topic is very exciting because we've got so many students who want to become musicians or whatever, but I don't think they sometimes understand what's going on behind the scenes and where your love of music can take you. So today I really am thankful that you all are here to share on your journeys from act, from being, whether you want to talk about your young years, whether you enjoyed music, if this is what you want to do. But I really want our audience to walk away with as much information as possible to say, wow, there's so much I can do in this, um, in, in this music um, career industry however you want to call it. So I want you each to start out, like I said, give us a two minute Cliff Notes version of your journey, starting from like going into college and how you ended up where you are now. So let's start with Professor Young. Good afternoon and blessings. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Um, I am Professor Young. Um, I am the director of the Warner Music Blavatnik Center for Music Business on the amazing campus of Howard University. Um, I got my start in the music industry actually here on Howard University's campus. I was this little black girl from South Jamaica, Queens and wanted to get in the music industry. But back then there weren't any role models or any, you know, high end mentors or mentorships for people like me. And I had to figure out my way. Um, so I guess towards my junior and senior year, I landed a highly coveted, well, I'm realizing that it's highly coveted nowadays, but it was an internship at Def Jam Records that led to a, a job that led to me finding my niche, which was marketing, which is marketing. Um, I was fortunate enough to work on uh, many of the hip hop iconic albums that we didn't know were gonna be iconic then. So people like Jay-Z and DMX and Foxy Brown all had amazing stories in my, in my trajectory. Um, years later, I worked at the Source magazine, and then uh, a friend of mine said, hey, you should be teaching. And I'm like, really? Um, the long story short is that I became a professor. I taught at uh, Metropolitan College of New York um, for about a couple of years, and there graduate school media program. And then coincidentally, um, I was the administrative professor at Monroe College for the last decade. Um, in 2022, a gentleman who used to be my intern called me and said that he had an amazing idea of, you know, for a center at Howard University. Incidentally, he is the only black head of business and legal affairs for a record label in the world. Um, and he got a gift for us to start and grow this amazing center here on the campus of Howard University. And it's really designed to, you know, empower, educate, excite students to become social justice warriors in the music business. Thank you, Professor Young. Let's let's go to Dr. Hollander. Tell us about your journey. Uh, good evening, and thanks for having me. Um, my journey was uh, I was primarily classically uh, trained to be performance track and um, <clears throat> went through the conservatory route and then ended up in the Midwest. And I was doing all the regional orchestras and you know further pursued my DNA. <clears throat> and then um, I got my Jo uh, basically a, a sabbatical replacement at Illinois State University, which was where I did my master's and it was my dream job. And after my year there, they offered me a job. And um, <clears throat> I don't know, my my mentor at the time just said, you know, you really need to go teach, like uh, not college, you need to go influence young lives. So um, I said, okay. And he said, go back East. <laughs> so Literally, uh, that's what I did. I just uh, sent some resumes out. And um, basically the 
um, I sent out my resumes in the first school of the call. I, that's where I was going. I just didn't have a preference and uh, just followed a light. <laughs> and uh, so I've been in Englewood for almost 20 years now. And then um, <clears throat> and for the in the college, just kind of found my lap as well, which uh, at Monroe, which has been, they said, you want to build a band. And so I said, that sounds fantastic. So um, and then through that journey, I've been just helping my students find navigate their ways and finding different careers in music um and they were able to explore that through uh when we were actually um in virtual learning actually um you know you can't do much with the band over online so we brought in people that were all um venues of music in the arts coming in and talk about their careers and what they did and expose students that you just don't have to perform that you can be in music business you can do music supervisor roles so um you know so that's been my journey is just you know pushing forward to the hands of uh music education and punks our, our young students yes i like that and I, i'm i've been part of that journey with uh, helping chaperone those trips that was pretty awesome and armand mr sadler had an opportunity to go on one of those trips with you as well so that was amazing um so mr sadler tell us about your journey <clears throat> for sure good evening all thank you so much for having me um two minutes is very difficult to sum up what has been eight years but really like my entire life that has kind of found its way you know to where i am now but i think if there's two things that you take away from um what i'm going to talk about throughout this evening it's hard work is absolutely necessary um it's it's a non-negotiable and it's okay to pivot i initially wanted to go into sports broadcast i had some rejections there and I thought about what my other passions were and throughout my life, whether it's been being in the church choir or rapping with my cousins or watching music videos. I've always loved music and I never pictured it as something that I could work in, but I had the tools and the abilities to turn it into something that I can make into a career. So I actually, funny enough, similar to um, Professor, Professor Young, I interned at The Source magazine in summer 2017 that really got the ball rolling for me. Um, I've freelanced for years. Freelancing is where you write for publications, but you're not officially part of their staff. You do uh, one-off articles for them. So I was able to freelance for Billboard Magazine, Pitchfork, Hip Hop DX, Consequence of Sound, a lot of different places that ultimately ended me up at uh, Vibe Magazine, where I've been for um, almost a year and a half. But yeah, over the course of that, I've had definitely had a lot of ups and downs. Working in music is very fun. It's a lot of cool opportunities, but the music industry is also very, very difficult, uh, very political. Um, it, it's got its highs and lows, but um, I've learned a lot. I've made a lot of great connections, uh, and I think it's also shown the power of networking. I think there are a lot of talented people who sometimes fall by the wayside because they don't put their themselves out enough, uh, out there enough. And there are some people who get very far, even if they're not the most talented, because they're very good at networking and building connections. Um, so I think, you know, just through my hard work and through my um, desire to network and put myself out there, I've been able to get to where I'm at now. Um, but yeah, definitely been a very um, involved journey. <laughs> this is what I say, very involved. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to kind of getting into more detail and offering any insight that I can to all of you. Thank you so much. Be before we start with the questions, Dr. Hollander, can you explain um, Klezmer? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, almost like an Eastern European Jewish um, uh, style of music. It's old school. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> man, back in early days, back in like Rush, like early Russia and all that, it's Klezmer music. So. Okay. Thank you. So let, let's start off um, with a first question. So if you look back on your journey so far, what do you think was the most challenging part for you? And anyone can jump in. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm open to start. Um, so similar to what I said in my intro, I was freelancing for a while. And the difficulty that comes in freelancing is you're not on a salary. You're not getting paid bi-weekly or semi-monthly. Like there's something called net 30 or net 60 within the music industry where so let's say I put an article out this month. It's November. I might not get paid for that until January. 
So you've kind of got to have your finances lined up to where you can live your life comfortably um, or as comfortably as possible, knowing that you're not going to get that money until later. Um, I took a lot of odd jobs over the last few years. I was driving Uber. I was working at UPS. I was a valet at a car dealership. I was working at Huntington Learning Center as a tutor. Um, and it, it got difficult at times because I knew I wanted to be doing this music thing full time, but I also had student loans to pay off and credit card debts to pay. And like, you know, you have to take care of your life. So, you know, I, the biggest thing I tell people is not to get so caught up in, in the glamor of the music industry, especially when you're not one of the rappers or the artists, like when, when you're a journalist or whatever the role is, like, you're not, you're not, you know, wearing the chains and driving the Maseratis and on red carpets or wearing the suits. You're the person telling those people stories and you're honestly making significantly less money than them. So I definitely encourage everyone to, you know, think about skills and talents that you have that you can make money off of while pursuing what you dream to do until what you dream to do is what you can do full time. So just to summarize, I think just figuring out the financial aspect of my life while dream chasing was my biggest challenge. Thank you. I can jump in there. Um, some of the sentiments I can echo um, with Armand. This music industry is, you know, has taught me that it's definitely about hard work. And you know, very few people have, you know, an entire um, crescendo. I call it, or you know, you have to make sure that you. For me, being in this music industry for thirty years, having to remain relevant, having to constantly reinvent myself, having to continue to learn, having you know to continue to make sure that you keep the relationships right. And I always say that this music industry presents, um, you know, the relationships are way more important than money, and it takes people a long time to really understand and know that. But you're you're only as good as your name. You're only as good as your last project. Um, you want to be able to, you know, oh, that's Armand. Oh, that's Professor Young or, oh, you know, whoever that is, because you want to make sure that you're able to utilize those relationships as leverage for, you know, moving forward. You always want to remain, um, you know, we call it like the humble brag, right? You always want to remain um, humble, but you also want to make sure that people understand and know your body of work. You want to make sure that people know and understand and your work ethic, right? Knowing that they can depend on you, knowing that they can call you, especially if they can, um, you know, provide, give you a project and you execute it. So I've learned all of those things over the years. And those were the difficult, you know, um, points of the music industry. You have to understand that it, there's definitely peaks and valleys, right? And so whether you, I work at a label, but at the end of the day, you know, you have to make sure that your name stands alone outside of that label. So for, for those of you who know me for a very long time, I was known as Jazz from Def Jam, Jazz from Def Jam, Jazz from Def Jam, right? But what happens is you out, well, Def Jam is, you know, that we all knew, um, you know, has come and gone, right? So I had to make sure that I am Jazz Young, the hip hop professor that can go anywhere and that you'll be able to know my name. So whether I'm at, you know, Def Jam Records, whether I'm at Monroe College in the Bronx, whether I'm at, um, you know, Howard, right? You have to make sure that, you know, who you are stands, you know, independent of where you work. <clears throat> yeah, I agree with a lot of that. Um, you know, for, for me, uh, some ch challenges with, um, you know, is it depends on the phase. You know, I was in a very performance based uh, career uh, early on and, and, you know, just the politics, who you know, keeping everyone happy and making sure that, you know, they were going to call you again for, for jobs. And, you know, and then on a we used the word before pivoting before uh and i went from a performance based um just on the go i was on the road to the point where you know i was always on the road and then i became all of a sudden a teacher in you know here and i stayed put <laughs> and there was a transition and it just um you know i lost all that you know, it was an adjustment from performance and I had to do what I did naturally and teach it to students and, do, you know, explaining that. Um, so those were the challenges in terms of uh, the career, you know, and just the adjustment, but, you know, everything, you know, works out and things work out for full circle, I would believe, you know, so there's peaks and valleys and sometimes they do connect, um, you know, and I mentioned the virtual thing, you know, because of that, if it weren't for my previous career, um, 
my virtual and my program at the high school would have fallen apart because I was able to bring in everyone I knew f from my career of from performance and bring them together. You know, um, I had people from Def Jam come on actually, <laughs> you know, and managers of some of their artists. And, uh, you know, so it, it was just a, that that was actually a full circle moment for me uh, and combining the two. And again, just learning to pivot and, you know, create new opportunities for everyone. So, <clears throat> um, so as I said, you know, not the cheap rambling, but, you know, the, the challenges is different for everyone. And, um, <clears throat> you know, so uh, what came easy to some is not easy for others. So, um, yeah, so I was keep it at that <laughs> okay thank you so let, let's, let's talk about the students um two of you are directly working with students armand i know you have sometimes gone and talked to students so you got a group of students in front of you who say i want to do what you do what are you saying to those kids what 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 piece of advice would you start off with and what pitfalls would they avoid? I know that that's a loaded question. So let, let's let's start the kids in front of you. What are you telling them about their academics? What in your academic journeys do you see as having helped you get to where you are? And then, you know, we'll take it from there. So for me, um, you know, there's two different paths, right? There's academia and then there's the music industry, right? So meeting for me, um, I, I want to say that my professional career will meet at the intersection, right? Um, the hip hop professor or, you know, this professor that teaches from the urban perspective. But students, I just encourage students to, you know, to follow their dreams and let them know that they can do anything, that this is obtainable. Um, that's the one great thing that I love about this program that um, we've designed and I am, you know, pushing through here at Howard University is that you, you're meeting these students at their needs. So some of them come in, you know, laser focused and knowing exactly what they want to do. Some may work, want to work A&R, some may want to be booking agents, some may want to be marketing executives, right? However, some just like, I'm just enthralled with the music industry. What can I do, right? And so the, the beauty of my job and what I pride myself on is meeting these students at their needs. I'm helping them to uncover and establish a goal for themselves, right? And I always tell them, you don't have to do one thing for a million years, right? You can you can change, you can learn, you can grow, and you may do, you know, three things. You may do five things. You may want to be a doctor and a lawyer. You can do all of those things, right? So empowering them and giving them courage to do so, but also helping them to find out exactly what they want to do, and then encouraging them and giving them the tools that they need. So I would tell the student, you know, the sky's the limit continue to kick down doors. The sky's the limit, you know, continue to break down, you know, break through these glass ceilings that still exists for people like you and me, you know, in this music industry. So what do we do? We help each other. We give each other opportunity, but also helping them to understand the dynamics so that they can navigate and grow in this music industry. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, my biggest piece of advice would be, so kind of how I describe my job is I do fun homework for a living. I'm writing research papers on artists and on producers and on celebrities. So if you really pay attention and are doing what you need to do in the classroom, it's an easy transition. You might not like that research paper you had to write on some random Greek God, but when you get to write about Drake or Bad Bunny or Metro Boomin or whoever, you'll apply yourself more because you like their music, you like who they are. And so it's a very easy transition there. Um, so I would say like the, the, the soft and hard skills that I developed throughout school, especially in college, um, have translated very easily. When I'm writing, I have a very, I'm able to use a diverse vocabulary. I know how to use punctuation, like small things like that ultimately really help help the process because it's it's one thing to like the music and describe it and be able to say it's fire. It's another thing to really put together something where people are reading that and they're like, you taught me a word I don't know, or wow, like the, the way you use syntax was incredible, like s stuff like that. So um, definitely applying those soft and hard skills, but most importantly, like just at the ground level with journalism, most people don't land bylines at Vibe Magazine or Billboard Magazine or Pitchfork early on. So you kind of have to be okay taking it step by step, start your own blog. I tell a lot of people to do that. A lot of people have successfully done that and have been able to apply the things that they've learned in school to, you know, um, running their own blog or even taking like lower level mid tier 
type of bylines at different publications and blogs before you before you get those those bigger ones so yeah i would say like the specifically with my career the the knowledge i gained through just writing papers especially as a communication major i wrote a lot of papers in college um and then also unfortunately unfortunately or if you're okay with it being a little patient too Yeah, I tell my students, you know, I get to see them go off to college and I always tell them, you know, if they're going to go into music, you know, be open mind because you might get, you know, caught into another channel of music and that's okay. Um, you know, you might f think because band was fun in high school and then all of a sudden you go to college and you focus in and you realize you may not, you know, that may not be the case. Um, but there are other avenues of music they can go down. And so I always tell them, keep your eyes open and you know, um, be aware <clears throat> of other avenues that you can explore. So, and it's, and it's okay, you're not a failure. So um, I do tell them that, you know, and a lot of times that it does happen that way. So, um, you know, and I stay in contact with them and, you know, as a, as a teacher should and make sure that they are, you know, they got, they're getting proper guidance and from someone who knows them, you know, for more than just their college years. So, uh, but that's my, it, you know, that's usually my advice to them is, you know, keep an open, open door to things. Okay, thank you. So for each of you in the current career that you are now, how did you know that this was the place for you? Are you looking to go further or just kind of stay? Where do you see yourself five, 10 years from now? Uh, I'll go first, um, if you don't mind. Um, I know it because I love it. Uh, it's every day. I don't call out sick. I mean, I go in every day and it's how far can I go, you know, and in terms of how far can I push the students and what can I, what experience can I offer the students this year, you know, that they haven't gotten before and they may never get. So, uh, and that becomes a game to me. What can, what can I do uh, to offer our students that no other school is offering our students? And, um, <clears throat> you know, so, so from that aspect, um, that's what I love. It's fun. I have a good rapport with the students, which makes it more enjoyable, uh, you know, and so, and just, it's kind of like, they always say being a teacher, usually you're stuck in like, you're frozen in time. So you're always dealing, you know, you're always dealing with 14 to 18 year olds and I'm getting older, but they're not. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, you know, so that's my favorite part of that, you know, is uh, how far, you know, I can push them and what can we experience together uh, five to 10 years from now. I don't know. We're doing things that I thought we'd never do. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I have a little checklist of things I like to do, but, you know, uh, I don't know, 10 years, I don't know, retired. No. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so that's that. So I thought I'd just go first on that one because it is exciting to be, uh, it's a lot of fun for me. Yeah, I, I see you enjoying the kids, um, taking them to play at different um, games, you know, the opening for baseball and different NBA and things like that. So definitely opportunities they probably would not have had. Um, when I talk about our high school in district, I always say, look, our band director takes the kids on college tours. How many band directors in high school do that? I don't know, maybe others do, but I know Englewood, Dwight Morrow High School, their band director does that. So kudos to you. Um, um, five to 10 years, it's, it's funny too. I was asked this question the other day and I sat and realized that I haven't necessarily plotted out what my next five to 10 years are because where I'm at now, I was chasing it for so long that the last year I've really spent enjoying it. Like it's, it's truly a privilege what I get to do. I've had jobs where I wake up, I look at my phone and I'm like, oh, I have to go into this thing. But Every Tuesday through Thursday, because I, I have a hybrid schedule, so I work from home Mondays, Fridays. Every Tuesday through Thursday, I wake up excited to go into j my, my job and write my daily news articles and figure out different events that I can go to. Um, so I've, I've, I've really spent the last year just kind of soaking in all of the hard work that I put in and working hard where I'm at, too. Um, I, I, I can get into everything I've done, you know, over the last year eventually, but... I do know a couple of specific things that I would like to accomplish. I want to do more on camera stuff. 
I've primarily just been writing, um, which you can see I'm on the Vibe website. Search my name, Armand Sather. You can see all the writing I've done. Um, but just being in this digital age, you know, a lot of publications have to pivot to more video content. So I do want to do that. I've had the opportunity to do some, but I want to do more. Another kind of benchmark I want to reach is having my own cover story, which is essentially if we were to put it, put out a, a print magazine with an artist on the front, I'm the one who's interviewing them. I've done them before, but at smaller places. So I think just being able to say that I have a cover story or, or multiple cover stories at Vibe Magazine kind of puts me in a different you know place in terms of all the writers who have written before. But um, and I, I think the biggest thing for me is also just kind of maintaining my ability to stay down to earth and maintaining my mental health, which I'm a big proponent of. The music industry is very fun. It can be very consuming. I find myself in New York City on days where I'm working from home and not planning to go in at all because there are fun events to go to and, you know, trying to really get better at saying no and taking time for myself. Um, so I think that's really just the biggest thing is maintaining, you know, the balance that I've kind of strive to have uh, within life because it's, it's very tough. Like, it, like I said, it's a privilege. There's so many fun things that you can do, things that you might not have ever imagined that you would be invited to, you get to do. And so that's been the last year for me. And um, yeah, I'm just looking to continue that, but also make sure that I prioritize Armon over, you know, putting Armon out there and putting Vibe out there. I love the self-care. I love that. And especially since you are super young and you have so much living to do, right? Um, I love that. And that's a part of my five years as well. Just, you know, I keep saying, you know, sending myself these little notes. It's okay, Jazz, to relax. It's okay to take a day off. But, you know, I'm always focused on the win, right? And sometimes people will say that's to my detriment um, or, you know, that's to my, you know, positive. But either way, you know, the goal is always going to be success, right? So uh, for me, I guess the next five years and making sure, yes, self-care, right? Um, I have this bucket list. And, you know, I'm saying from this little black girl from South Jamaica, Queens, hip hop has taken me all around the world and I'm so grateful for it, right? But I feel like there's so many other places and spaces that I need to be in. So a part of that is self-care. A part of that is checking off the things of, you know, from my bucket list. Um, a part of that or a big portion of that, obviously, is to, um, you know, focus on my personal children. I have two young boys. One is in college. One is in the seventh grade that I homeschool. So my life is always, you know, impacted by them um, positively, right? You know, revolves around them. But for professionally for me, um, just continuing to spread this message, you know, both at hey, here at Howard, both globally um, na and nationally, right? We want to make sure that we are continue to provide students with the, with the, you know, and this, okay, going back, and I'll be really briefly, you know, the music industry is, you know, definitely underrepresented, right? So one of the missions of our center is that the music industry has failed black and brown students, right? Period, right? We've failed, you know, the black and brown performer. How do we work as a collective to make sure we change those things? So those are one of the pillars that my center is built on. And I just want to continue to be able to share that message so that, you know, the world continues to um, provide, right? So give back to our students and make sure that they have the correct platforms that they need in order to grow. So I want to continue to share this message nationally and then globally so that we can continue to help students and really create and grow change makers, um, really create and grow um, social justice warriors in real time and making sure that they understand that they have to come back, right? And give back to the next generation. So my next five years will, you know, encompass all of those bits and pieces unless i hit the lottery i keep i keep on you know joking to the children that oh let me hit the lottery i'm gonna get low and they laugh right um but at the end of the day it's just all about continuing to serve and continuing to you know share this message thank you so much for sharing that um, I want to ask, I want to specifically, uh, Dr. Honda, you mentioned before about you working with the high school students, the college tours that you do with them. So when kids come to you and say, oh, I want to be in the band at, and when I go to college, or I think I want to be a musician or something, what, what are some of the conversations you're having with them besides what we've said before? 
get, you better put in the work. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's not given and, you know, what are you expecting out of it? And so <clears throat> those are the very preliminary conversations, you know, um, and then what happens if you don't get in? So, <clears throat> but, um, you know, a lot of them, you know, and I, you know, we talk about affording school and, you know, some easy, you know, not easy, but some ways is, you know, going to the HBCUs, you get band scholarships, you know, and that helps, you know, reduce the cost of tuition for students. Um, and sometimes the bell doesn't click until they start going through the financial aid process and then realizing I got to pay how much? <laughs> and then they come back to me and be like, so what do I need to do to work on a, an audition? So, you know, that's when the real, sometimes some students, that's what it takes. They just need to see that bill sit in front of them and say, I, oh, okay. So, um, yeah, but that's some of the conversations we have, you know, like, you know, music students, you know, they put on a lot of work, you know, it's because uh, not only you have your homework for your other classes, but then you're practicing on your primary instrument too. So that's, you know, because that's homework, you know, even though you, you love it, it still is time. So, um <clears throat> but those are the primary, you know, Kickstarter conversations we have. And then we go from there. Okay, got it. Anyone else want to jump in on that um, topic and share? Professor Young, what do you say to your incoming freshmen? Or or when kids come and do the tours on campus and say, oh, I think I want to come to the Blavat. I keep forget pronouncing that incorrectly. Only music Blavatnik. It's definitely a mouthful. Um, and so... We are a new center, and I'm just so excited that a lot of students are hearing about the center and saying that they came to Howard just for the center. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is beautiful. But then it's still, you know, the start of the work. And I just share um, the same thing. I just say it's time to work. Right. And then mm -hmm. Howard University is one of those universities that, um, you know, that mm -hmm. all of the the major corporations come to because they know that they can source amazing talent here, right? It starts here. And that kind of creates a little bit of a, you know, not necessarily a sheltered or privileged lifestyle, but the music industry is, is, is very different from other corporations. So my goal is to just share with them, you know, the expectations, like Armand was saying before about the hustle of the music industry, it's very different than corporate America, very different. And the goal is you have to have a certain mindset, you have to know, you know, like the doctor was saying about pivoting, right? You have to make sure that you stay on your P's and Q's and um, be prepared, right? So I always say, are you laser focused, right? You don't necessarily have to know what you want to do. You just have to be able to understand that I can support you in the how, right? And you have to have a certain mindset. You have to have a certain work ethic. You have to have a certain, um, not necessarily a level of, um, professionalism, right? But I teach it to you, but you have to make sure that you could just go. And that's what I, you know, try to strive and teach the students. You are, if you're ready to go, then I got you. Mr. Sadler, you want to jump in on that or, or not? Um, yeah, I think my situation is a bit unique because I didn't know that I wanted to be a music journalist until my junior year of college. So, and I wasn't a music minor. I didn't take any music classes in college. Everything that I was doing music related outside of my one semester running a radio show, it was outside of Cornell. Um, and so that came with time management. It came with going to class, doing my homework, doing the millions of things I was involved in on campus and then having time to write as well. So that's, that's something I, I stress is time management. But, you know, when it's something that you want, you put the time in, you know, I, I, this is, I don't think any of the roles that we have are things that you can passively do. If this is something you really want, then you have to put that, that time and that effort in and be okay. Sacrificing, be okay. Missing, missing out on things. Sometimes, you know, you miss out on things now so you can enjoy life a lot later. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's really all that I would say there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you said that you were not a music major or anything in college. So for any, for any, is there is any, there anything go back, back in, in your, your academic, academic to change? change? Um, I'm, I'm really happy with my journey. I mean, I think if anything, I would have loved to maybe have started a music magazine in college, just so it was a bit more directly on campus. Uh, I was working with a startup blog, 
with one of my Cornell classmates, but it was primarily housed in Atlanta. So I didn't have any direct contact with any of them outside of the one uh, peer I had at Cornell. But looking back, it would have been cool to have a journalism club and we all can meet and we can, you know, put out a magazine and host events, things of that nature. Cause that's kind of what I'm doing now. And that's the, that's probably the best part about being at vibe is my, my team is all black or, or, or people of color. And I get to see them every day. Um, for the years leading up to now I was working remote. So I was working from home talking to people through Slack or email or text, but there's nothing like being in person with people and connecting with people over, over music. It's a, it's a language that we all talk um, so I think that's probably the only thing, but otherwise I don't have any regrets about, you know, how, how my journey went. I think I ended up doing pretty well for myself. So, <laughs> Professor Young, Dr. Hollander, anything you, in your academic journey that you might change looking back or anything you would have done in addition to what you're doing now, or in addition to what you did? You can go Dr. Hollander, then I'll follow up. I don't... <clears throat> I mean, I, I don't know if I would have done anything different uh, or else I wouldn't have been, I'm not where I would not be where I am today. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, I have quite the past, you know, so, and I don't regret any of it, you know, um, <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, not to be boring about it, but you know, there's nothing I probably would have changed. There is a, uh, if anything, if I had to pick one, and you're saying, you know, Dr. Sadler, you said, no, you must pick one thing. Um, I would have gone back, I would have added a double major to my um, undergrad being just like a, just being a performance major is risky, you know, because there's no guarantees in just performance. Um, and so I probably would have added either, you know, they, they offered either music recording tech, uh, slash technology or an education degree, I probably would have double majored if I had to pick something, you know. Um, but that'd be the only thing I'd probably change. So for me, I think that um, a plan, more of a plan, we talked about that earlier in this conversation. I'm, I'm grateful for my, you know, experience, you know, I'm grateful for my unique journey. And, you know, very few people can say that they've had a journey and have worked with, you know, all the amazing people, both on the music industry side and the academic side as well. Um, but I think that, uh, and I share this, right, in a lot of my talks that, you know, many of the opportunities that have come to me have, you know, been, you know, known because of my work ethic, right? And have been offered. But I think that, you know, have had I had a, a more accurate life plan, I think that, you know, my life would have been a little bit different, right? You know, no one can say that they are, you know, all the amazing things, right? But, you know, pursuing is very different than, you know, the, you know, just saying the yes to things. And that's, you know, something that I teach into the students now. You have to have a more, a, fo a laser focus plan that's going to match your laser focus, um, you know, goals. And how do you match them? How do you go get them? I think that that's one of the major things that I, you know, if I had to do it over, I would do it a little, you know, I would have a five-year plan, a one-year plan. And um, Jay-Z, one of my, you know, I, not to plug, but I, you know, the, the first five Jay-Z albums are mine, right? And so I look at him and I always say how amazing he's grown as a, you know, an entertainer, but also a business plan. He recently did an art, a businessman, he recently did an article um, that I've read and he said, I can tell you exactly what I did for 365 days last year, laser focused towards my goals. And many people can't say that. And that's the thing that, you know, whatever that plan is, what are you working towards every single day um, that's going to get you the results that you um, are so one entitled to, right? Abundance is our birth right but then also you know what your, what your goals are and so that's the one thing that i would change a little bit more different about my life i would be more intent as opposed to accepting the positions or accepting um you know the opportunity thank you i feel like sometimes our kids really don't know what they plan on doing so they say yeah i, I like music but i feel like they don't ha always have the guidance or anybody within their circle to make those connections and say hey oh i know miss young she was working at monroe let me connect her to you and again like armand was saying as well sometimes they don't know how to use their their connections 
they don't understand how to network, which is which it's almost a skill, really. You have to if, if you're a shy person, you how do you walk into a room where you know anyone and walk up to them and say, Hi, my name's Ketsia. You're not gonna do that. So it's just a matter of helping train our children and putting them in the right um, spaces for them. So we've kind of talked, touched some of the questions that I had sent out in our packet. So I'm going to go to some of the Q&A questions from the audience. So we talk, touched on it a little bit before, but what advice would you give to someone who feels that they are putting in the work, which we've mentioned, but it feels like the person who has more connections um, are, are advancing and being given more opportunities? What do we say, say to, to that, yeah, that heart? I can, I can definitely take this one. I, when I think about this, I think about my days running track and how my coaches would say to look forward when you're running. As soon as you look to your left or your right, you get off step, you might you might be in first place and end up in second or third place. Um, so that's kind of how I've approached my journey. And there were moments where I was very insecure and I, I would have my friends who were also journalists who would be doing huge things and I was waiting for my moment. But you really have to do your best to not compare yourself because everyone's journey is different and it's not a competition. There is inherent competition in music. You know, she's been talking about Jay-Z. Jay-Z and Nas were competing against one another throughout their career, but they both were massively successful in different ways, but massively successful. And it's a similar thing in journalism. There are so many more opportunities out here than people realize, but you won't know that if you're looking at what someone else does and just wanting what what they want to do. So my thing was always, am I the best version of myself? Am I the best writer? So I just focused on being the best that I could be improving, constantly improving. Um, and I was able to achieve some things over the years that some of my friends who I would look at and I wanted to do what they did, they haven't been able to do. And they would tell me, yo, it's so cool. You got to write for Pitchfork. Like I, I would love to do that. Or you got to write here. That would have been so cool. So you know, it, it, it's, it's so important to not compare yourself. It, it can be tough. Um, I know that I've, I'm definitely a very prideful person. And <laughs> I've had moments where I, I'll look at what someone does and I'm like, I, I could have done that better. But you know, it's, it, it's not your time and it's not always going to be your time. And that's something that you really have to be okay with because when it is your time, that just means you step up to the plate and you have to hit it out the park, but it's just not always you're at bat. You know, you, you have to wait some time. So yeah, I, I would say just at any moment where you see someone achieve something and you get down on yourself, use that as fuel to get better. Um, and just focus on that and continue putting yourself out there as well. Because like I said, there are so many more opportunities than, than people realize. And there's also creating your own opportunity. It, it may not work for everyone, but the, the blog you start or the podcast you start or the show you start can end up being a multi-million dollar thing if you put in the work and focus on you, your path, your lane within the race. And I think that's pretty spot on of what you just said, because um, <clears throat> there's always going to be another opportunity somewhere. And, you know, connections are, um, look, every game, there's politics everywhere and it's who you know. And, um, you know, I'm fortunate, I'm, you know, I'm a people person and I, I can pretty much go almost anywhere and find someone I know or find no, I know someone who knows them. And, and that's, you know, especially when I was freelancing, that's how you got your jobs, you know, because they knew you or knew of you. So, um, and if you stay on, t on target to your goals and your career path, those opportunities will occur uh, because the more you get out there, the more people get to know you. So, um, you know, so it is, isn't an advantage that, you know, they get, you know, um, that people are being, you know, the question is advancing because they're getting more, there are more opportunities because there are no more people. Yeah. But as you get out there, you'll know them too. So, um, you know, it's, it's fair game. And I, I agree. And, you know, and I echo the both of um, my wonderful, wonderful co-panelists this evening. Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, keep the blinders on. So I always talk and preach about the blinders. Right. Um, just focus on you. Every your everyone's story is unique. Everyone will have a different path, a different journey. Everyone will have a different part of history. Right. You can't win focusing on someone else's, um, you know, business or story or their opportunity. Put the fo put the focus on your life and keep those blinders on and i do believe that those are the going to be the best experiences that one can have 
Definitely. I like all that advice. I think that goes even for us, even as we're getting older in our careers, because all of you said you have where you might want to be in the next five years. So still having that focus on where you want to see yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me. So next question from the audience is what are the various degree concentrations you would suggest for people to pursue that enhance your profile to find employment within the industry? So anyone jump in on that? Um, Music-wise, um, or just to enhance your resume, um, but you know, technology and, and marketing slash communications. Uh, you know, I think those are the big things right now, um, and I think that's what I would suggest. Uh, you know, like for instance, you know, in the public schools, where you know, we're, right now we're big on offering our tech programs, and that's kicking up pretty. You know, that's that's pretty popular right now. Um, so. Um, <clears throat> Those would be the kind of things I would look at in terms of enhancing your, you know, your resume. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I was a communication major, as we said earlier. So, and it offered a lot, like it, it sounds broad, but I was, I was offered a lot of different courses that I'm definitely using concepts from today, like oral communication, public speaking, uh, writing about communication, knowing how to cite sources, knowing literally just how to write visual communication, knowing how to assess visual things and knowing what people look for in that regard. I think a lot of colleges offer kind of different course work and majors and minors. So I can only speak for Cornell. I know there was a music minor there. Um, but I think that I definitely had a great foundation in being a communication major with the focus in media studies. Um, and I think, um, there was my focus and there was something else where I kind of had a business something it's, it's been like almost 10 years, which is crazy to say. So I, I don't know exactly what my, uh, whatever the word is, but like I was, I was taking business courses too. Um, but yeah, I would say for whatever specific colleges that, that you're looking for, you, uh, definitely take a really good look at what courses they offer, what majors, minors, focuses, all of those things, um, because of the, they will be different everywhere, everywhere. Um, but also specifically with journalism, and it's not to dissuade anyone from going to college because we, we, we are saying every it's, it's great to go to school, but there are a lot of people who either didn't major in journalism or media or anything related to that, or didn't go to school at all, who are successful journalists too. Um, and this goes back to the whole pivoting thing. So if, if you all end up completely shifting and you're an engineer or you major in math or whatever, and you end up wanting to be a journalist, it is still something that, that you can do as long as you have that foundation of being a, a good writer, that, that love for music and the work ethic to kind of learn the soft and hard skills that are associated with this career. So my major was mass communications and my minor was secondary education. Um, I think that, you know, I graduated a long time ago. Ten years is nothing, sir. Um, you are good and super young. Next year will be my 30th um, year of graduation from V. Howard University. So it's been a long and amazing journey. But I think that over the years, um, for me in particular, these majors have evolved, right? So if you are late, I always tell students, you don't have to know where you're going to end up, just know where you're going to start, right? So I do, and I also believe that, you know, to give students encouragement to finding your niche. And yes, if this is not the best um, major for you, it's okay to switch and it's okay not to to rush out into real life and not to rush out into the music industry until you are, you know, totally satisfied with, you know, what this has become, right? What this world has become. But I do believe that, you know, many of the schools have, um, you know, obviously music business degrees at this point. So if you are all the way there and you know that you're laser focused, um, you know, Howard University, we have this center, but we have a school of fine arts, which has, you know, a music industry degree that kind of parallels our program. We have um, COAS, the School of Arts and Sciences that has a hip hop minor, oh my gosh, right, that we're launching. And then also, um, again, School of um, Communications, where I graduated from, a lot of the students, you know, are you know, are laser focused in entertainment and music in some way. So the mass communications works well. And then lastly, for me here, I'm in the School of Business, right? So you have many students that are 
have degrees in marketing or business finance. I have students, um, one particular shining star that, you know, his major is finance. So he wants to be a finance person at a record label. Um, another thing that I always, always, always teach students is that you can marry your dreams, right? So you can have, if you want to be in the music industry, but maybe you have. So when I taught at the Monroe College, a lot of the parents were Caribbean, right? And they were stush on making sure that the students said, you know, you know, you will be an accountant, right? No, you will be an IT major. But what I was able to do is share that you can focus on those careers within the music industry, right? I met with a lot of parents. So the goal is for you to, you know, making sure that whatever it is and finding your niche, you know, connecting with those majors so that it'll give you that much more leverage when you're applying for a job. So say, for instance, if you want to be a, you know, work in the in the finance department of the of a music you know of a label yes you can you know your major can be finance and you can you know or it can be accounting or you can definitely um find out what you want to do or you know the realm of that and apply that thank you because i i think that that's a good point that you raised was that yes a lot of families see um accounting as okay you need to go and work in the bank but you like your music so it's a win-win to be doing what your parents want you to do which is be an accountant but yet you're also in that music world where you know music makes the world go round for you so i i think that's that's what our students need to hear that traditional careers don't have to be in a traditional environment you mm -hmm. can take it outside of that traditional world um, okay, so let's take another question. I like this question from the um, from the audience, which says, "What suggestions do you have to give balance to the professional versus starstruck aspect? That is, being the musician you follow, enjoy, and enjoy their music all your life. So, yeah, you get to meet Jay Z or whatever. How, how do you stay cool and not?" fumble your words. Oh my gosh. I, 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 the, the, whoever asked that question is more than welcome here at our center, right? One of the classes that I teach is don't be a groupie. L literally the name of the class, right? Um, one of my students, you will love him. Um, he, I'll tell you the brief version of his journey, but he was fortunate enough to, um, Live Nation is one of our career partners, and so he was fortunate enough to, to intern or extern on the Beyonce Renaissance World Tour. Oh my gosh, right? And then um, the proceeding to that is that he got a paid internship at the Live Nation um, off-field offices here in DC. And one of the things that he um, always preaches to the other students about is how I impacted him in knowing that you have to have proper etiquette, right? Um, you have to, if, if this is your job, then you can't be starstruck. So you have to make sure that you stay professional, um, that you have certain etiquette and, and respectful so that people will ask you back right because if you are a groupie or if you ask for autographs or i've had some women and men that have literally thrown themselves right at artists right i hope this is um age appropriate right um respectfully to the parents that are on here but definitely be able to you know so that you'll know so that you can let your student know right but at the end of the day you want to make sure that you teach them in advance proper etiquette, um, you know, manners, training, and then also teach them what they're looking like. What are you looking for? Do you want to meet the artist? Because you can pay for a meet and greet and do that. Or do you want to develop a relationship of professionalism so that, so that you can work, you know, long term in this music industry and showing them the difference in advance? So I won't provide an opportunity for our students unless they actually attend the, you know, the class, don't be a groupie. And in addition to that, don't be a groupie and not to change the subject, um, you teach them, obviously, you know, simple etiquette. You have to teach a lot of the students, is, you know, people are shocked, but you have to teach a lot of the students personal hygiene, right? Um, you know, what to wear, right? 
and and respectfully and humbly and if we are you know a part of a team or part of a culture it's you know there's no shame in that some you know everyone wasn't raised the same way so you have to sometimes we call it going back to the basics you know you have to shower you have to dress accordingly um you have to wear undergarments right um if you don't have deodorant please come come ask me for it i'm here to support you but back to the question you have to make sure that you represent yourself all the way up here on the professional level so that people can look at you in that way yeah, I 100% I agree. Um, my job is literally to tell their stories and also to critique them. Like, journalists are critics, so sometimes we have to write negative things about these people. And so I've definitely had the great opportunity to interview, meet a bunch of artists that I am fans of. But if I let my fandom get in the way of my role as a journalist, then the story might end up being bad. The interview might end up being bad. Um, so I have to set all of that aside and remember what I'm there for, do the job. It's natural, um, you know, as humans, we get excited and that's okay. You should get excited about the things that you do, but you ultimately have, have a job to do. Um, so I, I, I can't, at this point, I don't really get too, too starstruck. Honestly, it, and if I do have those feelings, I use it to my advantage. If it's someone who I am a fan of. That means I probably know them better. I know what they like, and it makes the conversation even better. So there's ways to kind of flip those feelings into something that can work to your advantage based off of what you do in those specific roles. Um, so, yeah, I would say, you know, just you got to have a lot of conversations with yourself going into it and remind yourself that you're there as a journalist or as a photographer or as a videographer and not as someone who's attending a meet and greet, as Dr. Young said. <clears throat> yeah, there's, um, and just another aspect I tell my students when, you know, they meet some uh, celebrities, you know, and sometimes not always just uh, musicians in the field. So like when we play, uh, we get contracted out by ESPN sometimes for these basketball tournaments. Some of the NBA players come to, to their um, support their, you know, their, their alma mater. So, you know, they see these players and I remind them, they're people, <laughs> just they're people. So you treat them like people and they're just, you know, they just happen to make more money than you. <laughs> so, uh, and they have more spotlight on them. And so, um, you know, and it goes a long way. So we were doing one um, event and we ran into three celebrities and they were able to, they, you know, they behaved. I reminded them, hey, listen, just they're people, just say hello. And they took pictures with our group, you know, um, no one else, you know. So, you know, just asked them nicely. And so that was that. And so, uh, and I re remind them of that, you know, and also, you know, and my, my famous one for me, uh, I've met a couple musicians uh, and I met a big uh, direct movie director once, had a half hour conversation with the director. Director, um, we were at, honest, this is a true story. I was 20 years old and I won't tell the whole thing, but we're, I was, I was, you know, we talked about another majors, but I actually, through college, I worked in a sales department at a hotel. <laughs> so, um, and so anyway, you know, I, I met some famous people. So, but I'm bad with celebrities. I don't know who's who. So anyway, I was talking to this movie director for a half hour and this, that, and the other, we're just talking. And I said, so what do you do for a living? And he looked at me like, oh, I'm in the film industry. And I said, oh, okay. So like what part, like you direct, do you do this, you do that. And he's like, you have no idea who I am, do you? I said, not a clue. And, uh, and you know, and then he's like, wow, it's, this is a real conversation, you know, and it's been a while since I've had a real conversation. And he said that. Uh, and I can't tell you how many times I had that conversation with different people that I just don't know who they are. Um, and they, they enjoy it. So, you know, the starstruck thing, you're like, oh, you think it's head back, like, oh, that's you, okay, whatever. But you know, it, that's the end of it, you know. And I tell that story to my students and just remind them they're just people. They they want normalcy too. So, um, so that'd be my suggestion. Just remember that, you know, and that that keeps the balance. And also, the more you get involved with your career path, the more that becomes normalcy. Is seeing, you know, if you advance more, you see more of these famous people, uh, and then. Well, lo and behold, you become known. And you may not be famous, but you're known. So <clears throat> anyway, so th that that would be, you know, the balance there in terms of just it, they're they're just people. <laughs>
Thank you for sharing that. And, I, and and a lot of what you're saying is just some some basic information that even some other adults need to have as well and information they can continue on through their trajectory from student to becoming a professional in whatever their career might be. So I feel like we've covered all the questions that I had. So what anything else burning information that we haven't talked about yet that you want to share with with our students as far as what they need to do as far as in, in high school, Doc Hollander, you're with, you're with the, the young ones. You even have middle schoolers. And I always say also that because um, band starts in my school, which is a third to fifth grade school, I say if you start band early, then by the time you get to middle school, you know Dr. Hollander, and then you get to high school, bam, bam, you're good. You got that relationship going. So anything else you guys want to um, talk about that we can share with, with the students as far as the academic piece or any other things that they should do to enhance and, or strengthen their, the areas that they want to go into or that they don't even realize. Really quickly, um, and it may sound cliche, but, you know, students, especially um, junior high and, and high school students need to understand this. Do not let anyone dictate your dreams. Go for what you want to do. Can't nobody live your life for you. Don't listen to any negative energy on your life and on your dreams. Stay focused. And the only thing that your parents or the world can ask of you is your best. If you do your best, there's nothing else um, and you cannot fail. So I, I run into a lot of students that said, oh, you know, such and such said I can't do this or, you know, I don't think that I'm whatever you want to do, double up and go for it. Right. Um, and don't take any negative um, comments, suggestions, um, any, you know, any support from the, the hater. Don't do it. Focus on what you want to do and when, right? You'll always find somebody that understands your vision. Always find someone that will support you. You will always find someone that will help you to get, will want to help you to get to point, you know, from point A to B. Um, I've met students, especially, you know, some of the schools that I've taught at, you know, they will get a, a bachelor's degree and then go back and work at the laundromat, right? Or go back and work at retail. And that's okay if that's what your heart's desire is, right? Go for, you know, something unfathomable. Go for something that you would never dream um, that you would be able to accomplish. Trust me, you know, it's all in the stars. I have students that, you know, millionaires, right? Who I've taught. I have students that are far out to pass, you know, me. And that's what the generations do, right? The next generation, you know, does more. The next generation does more. That's what you have the foundation for. So, you know, go for it with a thousand percent and don't listen to any hater. Yeah, definitely, definitely want to echo that. Um, there will be a lot of people who will hear your dreams and try to shoot them down. Um, and then when you reach a certain point, some of those same people may come around and be like, oh, I always knew you could do it. Or just supporting you out of nowhere, commenting on your Instagram, showing love, all this stuff. I've, I've seen it. I, I don't really focus on it. I, I ultimately really just show appreciation for it. But the reality is people do want to support uh, they want to feel like they're supporting someone who's winning and you know, you don't start out winning at first and that's okay. Definitely don't let that get into your head. Like I've said before, and like, I'll continue to say, just focus on being the best version of you. And, you know, people will see all the big things that you do, whether it's a verified check on Instagram or interviewing this person or going to this place and they'll focus on, on, on everything surface level, but find gratification and knowing that, you have put in the work that you've put in, you've overcame the things that you've overcome. And uh, similar to what uh, Professor Young said, the, the, there will be a circle of people who will support you. So just, you know, definitely focus on on the love that you receive. Dream chasing is a very, can often feel very lonely, um, but it, it, it feels so good when you do get to where you wanna go. And it, it also increases that hunger within you to find a new mountain to climb. Um, and so, definitely just maintain that that desire to work hard 
Um, be bold also. One thing I've done throughout my career is be very bold and courageous, whether it's sending a DM to a writer who I thought their work was good or sending a DM to an editor who I want to work with or when I go to these music industry events and I see someone I recognize in the music industry talking to them, making sure they know me. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're in the generation now where people may not ca <laughs> carry business cards as much, but don't be afraid to give out your Instagram, take someone's Instagram, give out your, your phone number if you're comfortable with that. Like, it's it's such an advantageous generation we're in with social media like the power to connect with people is just so much more expansive so use every avenue that you have to put yourself out there connect with people and also put your work out there too right and also i would say always you know be prepared and in terms of you you know, expect the unexpected. You never know when that phone call is coming, you know, ever. Uh, I, I can't even count the amount of times I was not ready for something. I got a phone call and, you know, um, I was I was literally out one night with my friends at a, at a you know, I'll be blunt, at a bar. And uh, I got a phone call and they said, hey, we want you to go on tour to Iceland and Scotland for the next two weeks. I said, when the, I said, okay, great. When? And they said, we're leaving in six hours. And I said, uh, okay, and you just get up and go. Um, you know, drastic, yes, but you never know when that's coming. Um, I have, you know, then I heard there was going to be an opening for a drumline spot at one of the NFL football teams, uh, the Indianapolis Colts. And I knew one of my students was out there, and I called him, and I said, hey, there's going to be an opening. You're going to go audition. He goes, hey, I've been busy. I haven't played in two weeks. I go, that's nice. Be ready. <laughs> uh, and sure enough, he got the spot. You know, you never knew when you never know when that phone call is coming. So, um, you know, if anything, as I said, you always got to be on guard and be ready for whatever's coming your way. Either whatever field you're in, you know, you never know you have to go write a story or go perform somewhere. Um, but you know, it's uh, there, there's no slacking. <laughs> And, and it all ties back to what you all were saying before about putting in the work. You know, Doc Hollander, you're working with the, the kids in school who want to go off to college and go on to a Howard. But as you said before, you got to practice your instrument however many hours a day. You have to do the schoolwork because you have to take SATs, ACTs. They're looking at a GPA. They're not just giving out a band scholarship if you don't have the right GPA. You need to do some work with that. So that piece of it. And then once you get into college, you know, once you get into a Howard, there's work you got to do there. You got to maintain those grades as well, because I'm sure the job recruiters are not coming to hire people who are not doing the work. And then as Armand, as you said as well, you have to put in the work as a freelancer or working and writing articles that you may not have wanted to. So there is work that you have to do while you're chasing that dream in order to get where you want to go. Um, so any other final thoughts we want to share with the folks? Nope, no final thoughts. All righty. So I want to thank you all tonight for joining me in this episode, like we said, of college planning with the National Alliance for the Advancement of Haitian Professionals. Um, you guys, I know you could be anywhere else after the weekend of Thanksgiving but I really appreciate that you took this time out to talk to our students. Thanks for sharing your contact information. Hopefully someone will reach out to you who has a question about something because that's what we're about here um, with NAHP and College Cafe is sharing information because we want every student to become their best and reach their potential. So to our audience, thank you so much for joining us and we will see you on the next episode. And again, let me thank our partners, NAHP, um, Golden V, Parent Matters. We couldn't do what we do without our partners in this endeavor. So thank you to everyone. And we're looking forward to seeing you on our, on our next episode. And just let us know what you're thinking. Um, follow us. We're all on Instagram and Facebook. So let us know your thoughts and what you've learned from what we've been sharing. So thank you so much to our panelists. And you all have a great night. And we will see you again next time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me and, and kudos to my fellow panelists. It was a pleasure learning and growing with you guys. Blessings on blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys.